Yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. Oi, come here. Ow, somebody grab him. Piers Featherstone Hall, gentleman and hero, is due to return from the Americas, having completed a secret mission of the utmost importance to the British Empire. If anyone can help me, this man can. Empire. After three months trailing round America, followed by a couple of weeks on a steamer in a third-class cabin. Oh, it's good to be home, isn't it, Mossa? It's good to be back on dry land, sir. I, I, well, you seem to have regained some of your colour, old chap. You can't keep a good man down, sir. Just try keeping your meals down for now, Mossa. We're nearly home. Righty ho, sir. society, the very cornerstone of civilization, eh, Mossop? Right you are, sir. America's all very well, but I wouldn't like to live there. I can't help feel there's something missing. Poverty, I expect, Mossop. Not enough dregs of society, no beggars, no urchins, no common street tarts and drunken ne'er-do-wells. No wonder you felt out of place there. Still, it's a young country. Give them time. They'll have their own poor one day. But America is so big! How will they ever be able to manage all those people? Don't be too disparaging of the Americans. They could be very useful allies in a war someday. Come on, hail a carriage, and let's go home, Mossop. There's bound to be one in the streets, sir. young upstart could do with a lesson in good manners. Looking after her child must be a monumentous task. It's where one can buy periodicals. I would have to speak to the newsboy if I wanted to purchase one, though. It's a boy selling a periodical of some kind. You, urchin boy, summon us a handsome cab. Begging your pardon, sir, but I'm selling a newspaper, and my master be as like to flog me to death if I was off and not selling. What are you selling? The latest copy of the Sporting Times, Governor. All the results of last week's racing within these very pages. Essential information indeed. I'll take a copy. I'll be needing your payment, Governor. That engine is a fine example of British scientific craftsmanship. Paper! 
That lady has a story or two to relate. The air is full of the sounds of her idle chatter. It shows the schedule for the trains. It's advertising the joys of travelling up north. He's not important, he's my manservant. So, what shall we do next, Mossop? I suggest we go home, sir. Me feet are killing me. Tell me a bit about yourself, Mossop. Well, sir, there's not much to tell. I was born in Clerkenwell to parents who were servants just like me. It runs in the family then, the serving profession. Oh yes sir, and all 17 of me brothers and sisters are in the trade too. Apart from one brother, he joined the Royal Navy. Why did your brother join the Navy? He was shanghaied as he was emptying Lord Chomley's latrine into the Thames. A boat pulled alongside him and he was bundled into a sack by some big burly thugs. I think they're called recruitment consultants, aren't they? We didn't hear from him for weeks. Lord Chomley was furious. Thought me brother had stolen his bucket. Why did most of your family become servants? We can't cook well enough to become chefs. We're too short to do any manual labour. And we don't have enough initiative to do things without being told what to do. Remind me again, why did I employ you? I was the cheapest, sir. Oh yes, that's right. How are we going to get home? We should take a cab, sir. Shouldn't we go somewhere more interesting than just my house? Sir, we've just travelled halfway across the world by land and sea. Haven't we had enough adventure for a while? I don't know, Mossop. I get the feeling that this is the start of a whole new adventure. Why are you following me? I'm your loyal and trustworthy manservant, sir. I will follow you to the grave. Actually, I think I'd rather let you go first to that particular destination. Let's get on a train and go somewhere exciting. Actually, sir, I'd rather go home and put me feet up. And so you shall, Mossop. As soon as you've done the laundry, cleaned the house and made me some tea. Oh, yes, of course. How could I forget? I have nothing more to say to you. Righty ho, sir. He looks like a well-bred chap. He looks like an under-tall kind of fellow. Aha! A handsome cab. The only civilized way of getting around town. I shall get this one to take me home. driver to wait here, Mossop. I may want to go out again later. Righty-ho, sir. Home at last. Fetch me a drink, Mossop. I need to relax a little before I make my report to the Queen. But you're not due to report in for a week, sir. Better make it a large drink, then. What? Excuse me, Mr. Featherstone Hall, I presume? I can't believe it. Nor can I, sir. I don't believe you cannot pronounce my name properly. It's Fanshaw. But it... it's a talking cancer. It speaks English. It's hardly talking English if it can't pronounce one's name. It's perfectly simple. F, silent E, A, silent T, silent H, silent E, silent R, S, silent T, silent O, N. Swap the N and the S, silent E, H, A, U, G, H. Haw! Fan, Shaw! 
I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Fanshaw. Please accept my sincerest apology. Very well, but don't let it happen again. What do you want? I'm desperately in need of help from a renowned gentleman such as yourself. Oh, you want a job? Well, I'm sorry, but I already have Mossop here for my manservant, and I'm happy with his work. But if you can cook anything other than bangers and mash, and manage to take a boat trip without shouting your lunch at the fishes every five minutes, you might be in with a chance. Oh no, Mr. Fanshaw. I'm not looking for work. That's typical of the youth of today, Mossop. They think the world owes them a living. Too true, sir. You misunderstand me, sir. I am here to implore you to undertake a mission. A mission so dangerous and so important that the fate of the world may very well depend on it. I beseech you, as a gentleman, to listen to what I have to say. As a gentleman, I'm obliged to hear your story, but make it brief, or Mossop, as a manservant, will be obliged to throw you out of my house. Very well, Mr. Fanshaw. Thank you. My story begins thousands of miles away on a remote tropical island in uncharted waters. There, deep within a mountain, lies the diabolic laboratory of Dr. Dinsey. Who's Dr. Dinsey? He's an evil, twisted genius who has discovered the satanic secret of combining two different species to make a new creature altogether. He has a device that he calls the Gene Machine. The two original creatures are completely destroyed and the resulting animal is so different, so strange. Mr. Fanshaw, what he's doing is against God himself. Sounds all right to me. Maybe this doctor could combine Mossop with a fish to get him some sea legs. You don't understand, Mr. Fanshaw. Dr. Dinsey intends to create an army of horrific creatures which he can use to take over the world. This all seems a bit far-fetched to me. I am living proof of his madness. He took a normal alley cat and combined it with a human being to make me. I was his 73rd experiment. That's my name, 73. So you have all the sentience and intelligence of a man, but also the agility and suppleness of a cat. Yes, Mr. Fanshaw. Washing myself has a whole new meaning to me now. You wouldn't believe what I can bend over and lick. A real gentleman would never lick himself. There. Now, nah, get someone else to do it. You know, I think this is just some sort of confidence trick to extort money out of God-fearing fellows. You're probably just some hair-suit boy with a, a tail. Mossop, throw him out. No, but wait. You're my only hope. There is no one else brave enough to conquer Dr. Dinsey. Oh, I'm sure there's lots of gullible people round who'd only be too happy to help you. But they don't have your reputation, Mr. Fanshaw. I'm sorry I bothered you. I thought you were the bravest adventurer in the world. The newspapers must have it wrong. Maybe I'll try Rafe Kingpiece instead. He claims that he fears nothing at all. Kingpiece? I wouldn't believe anything that rogue says. The man's a charlatan. He dyes his hair, you know. He's not naturally blonde. And yet I'm sure he would take on this mission. For a price, I'll wager. The knowledge that he had saved the world would doubtless be reward enough. Not for him. That bounder can't be trusted. If he saved the world, he'd probably keep it for himself. You give me no choice. Help me, Mr. Fanshaw, or I will have to ask Mr. Kingpiece. Well, we can't have that, can we? Mossop, hail a carriage to take us to Buckingham Palace. I'll inform Queen Victoria about the situation, and we'll have the Royal Navy sort this scoundrel out in short order. I'm afraid it's not as simple as that. Dinsey has spies everywhere. If a naval task force was assembled, he'd go to ground and disappear until he was too powerful to stop. We'll find someone else to help, then. Who else would believe my story, Mr. Fanshaw? They'd think it was a trick, like you did. You'll have to do it alone. My master is not afraid to fly in the face of adversity. Thank you, Mossop. Just what exactly do you expect me to do? You must get to Dinsey Island and defeat the Doctor and his mutant army. Where is this island? Uh, the area is uncharted, so I don't know. You'll have to find it. My master can find anything. Thank you, Mossop. Can you give me a clue, 73? While I was there, I heard the doctor talking about the only other man who knew the location of the island, a seafarer called Captain Nematode, who shared Dinsey's hatred of the world's governments and who helped him to set up his laboratory. Then we must charter a ship and find this Captain Nematode. Mossop, what funds do we have left after our American trip? Not enough to charter a ship and a crew, sir. In fact, barely enough to feed us for a week. Are you saying that because you don't want to set sail again, Mossop? 
Oh, no, sir. But couldn't we go on an adventure we could walk easily to just this once, please? An ambling adventure? Couldn't we tackle a menace that's just a brisk stroll away? A threat that's only a jaunty saunter down the road? Who oh, no, knows, sir? There might be a mad doctor just around the corner we could battle. Oh, yes, Mossop. Wouldn't that be just so convenient for you if the local family doctor turned out to be a crazy monster? I don't think so. Not a good, decent man like Dr. Jekyll. I don't go to him. I go to that nice young Dr. Clippin. Anyway, we really do have next to no ready funds, sir. Then I will have to raise the necessary funding myself. 73, you stay here, where you'll be safe from passing circus folk who may wish to turn you into a sideshow attraction. Mossop, we must think of a way to get some money. About £8,000 will do, I should think. £8,000?! However will we find that much? <laughs> <laughs>